Good day everyone! Welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to share to you a mangrove study conducted in Samar, Philippines with the title, Assessment of Species Diversity, Biomass and Carbon Stock of Mangroves in Makeda Bay, Samar, Philippines. Mangroves are flowering trees and shrubs found in tropical and subtropical intertidal zones. They are well adapted to marine and estuarine tidal conditions. Mangroves provide critical ecosystem goods and services to local communities such as supply of timber, fuel wood, food, medicine, and offer coastal protection against natural calamities and erosion. They also serve as nursing and breeding grounds for various fauna, thereby supporting faunal activities that help establish the food web. These ecosystems also capture and store large amounts of blue carbon, hence being called as blue carbon ecosystem. Due to this, they are considered one of the most significant ecosystems due to their contributions to adaptations and mitigation procedures against the impacts of climate change. However, they are threatened by various factors despite their importance. In the Philippines, mangrove ecosystems are mainly degraded by natural and anthropogenic disturbances. In summer, known threats include timber harvesting, land reclamations, tourism, aquaculture, agriculture, pollution, and climate change. Numerous rehabilitation efforts did not produce target results due to inadequate assessment of mangrove areas, inaccurate species selection, and other site conditions. Hence, a suitable and adequate assessment of the present status of mangroves will provide baseline data for synthesizing the most appropriate and implementable management plan. Given the ecological and economic importance of these mangroves, this study aimed to, first, identify the mangrove species present in Makeda Bay, second, Determine the biomass and carbon content in the above-ground and below-ground pools of mangrove stands in Makeda Bay. Third, analyze the mangrove community structure based on basal area, relative density, relative frequency, relative dominance, importance values, and shannon Weiner Diversity Index. And lastly, to formulate recommendations and integrated management and conservation strategies for the mangrove communities in Makeda Bay. The data collection was conducted in selected mangrove forests surrounding the Makeda Bay. The mangrove study sites are located in Katbalogan City, Yabong, Muchong, Paranas, San Sebastian, Villarreal, Talalora, Daram, and Zumaraga. Mangrove species were identified according to Primavera's Field Guide to Philippine Mangroves. Prior to the calculations for the biomass, the tree diameter at breast height and the wood density of each species were identified. Then, the general equations provided by Komiyama et al. were used to calculate the above-ground and below-ground biomass. The above-ground and below-ground carbon content were determined using the equations provided by Kaufman and Donato. After, the carbon dioxide equivalent was calculated using the equation used by the United States Agency for International Development in their assessment of mangroves in Iloilo City, Philippines. To analyze the structure of the mangroves in Makita Bay, the following equations were used to determine the selected parameters. Diameter at breast height, basal area, density, relative density, frequency, relative frequency, dominance, and relative dominance. After the relative density, relative frequency, and relative dominance were calculated, the importance value can now be determined in order to identify the significant species in an area. Lastly, the diversity of mangrove species is calculated using Shannon Winder's Diversity Index. We will now be presenting the results and discussion of this study. The species composition and abundance of mangroves in Makeda Bay 
are presented in Table 1. A total of 19 mangrove species were recorded in Makeda Bay. Among these species, only Acanthus volubilis was the observed mangrove associate, while the rest are true mangroves. The 19 species belong to 11 families and 12 genera. Rhizophoraceae is the most represented family with four species. Table 1 also shows the conservation status of each mangrove species based on the IUCN Red List. Most of the species are classified as least concern, but Campostemon philippinensis is noted to be endangered, Avicenia rumphiana is vulnerable, while Aegiceras floridum and Cirrops decandra are near threatened. Figure 1 presents the distribution and abundance of mangrove species in Makeda Bay. A total of 1,239 individuals were observed in Makeda Bay. The top three most abundant species were Avicenia rumphiana, Cifiphora hydrophilacea, and Cirrops tagal. These three species are widely distributed as they were observed to occur in all sampling sites. Meanwhile, the least abundant species are Acanthus ebracteatus and Acanthus volubilis. These two species, along with Silocarpus granatum and Cirrops decandra, have limited distribution as they occurred in a single site only. The biomass, carbon stock, and the corresponding carbon dioxide equivalent in each sampling site in Makeda Bay are presented in Table 2. With a total mangrove area of 1.2 hectares, Makeda Bay contains a total biomass estimate of 708.57 tons per hectare and 79.89% of this is attributed to the above-ground pool. Furthermore, this total biomass estimate equates an estimated total of 436.4 tons of carbon per hectare and a total sequestration potential of 1,601.55 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. It is shown in Figure 2 that the two sites with the largest total biomass and carbon content were Katmalogan and San Sebastian, with volumes of 225.87 tons per hectare corresponding to carbon content of 162.77 tons per hectare and 136.17 tons per hectare with carbon content of 99.5 tons per hectare respectively. These high volumes are attributed to the large volumes of the diameter and breast height of the trees in these sites. In addition, these results are in line with the findings of Bayan Others in 2021 and Pokhran and Sherpa in 2020. According to the study of Bayan Others, mangrove species diversity is positively correlated with biomass production and carbon storage. However, Dharam having a larger sampled area, number of species and individuals than Zumaraga had the least biomass and a carbon stock contribution of 12.16 tons per hectare. Hence, the results were not consistent with the general assumption that higher species diversity of mangrove forests would result in higher mangrove biomass and carbon storage. The summary of importance value analysis is presented in Table 3 shown in the screen. Of the 19 mangrove species found in Makeda Bay, Avicinia marina scored the highest importance value. This implies that Avicinia marina ranked first as the most abundant mangrove species in the whole Makeda Bay. According to Jacoto et al., the success of Avicinia marina is attributed to the elevated carbon dioxide levels which increases their photosynthetic rates. In this study, Avicinia marina was most abundant in Katbalogan, San Sebastian, and Mochong, the three sites that ranked highest in carbon dioxide emissions. Next in rank is Sonerasha alba, followed by Rhizopora apiculata. Both species thrive on seawater areas where their growth is supported by high salinity and sandy mud substrate. Here, Table 4 shows the summary of the calculation of Shannon Weiner diversity index values per site in Makeda Bay. Species diversity is an important parameter of community structure and ecosystem health. It provides a measure of how diverse and balanced the number of species that exists in an ecosystem. With 11 identified mangrove species, the site with the highest species diversity was San Sebastian with a Shannon Weiner index of 2.03.
This is closely followed by Talalora with 2.01 index and Katbalogan with 1.68 index. The site with the least species diversity was Zumaraga, having a 0.083 Shannon diversity index. To visually compare the diversity of species per site in Makeda Bay, Figure 3 presents a column chart of their Shannon Weiner diversity indices. To put this into context, the scale used by Giovanna and Pampelona was utilized to categorize the diversity values. In this scale, a diversity index greater than 3.5 is categorized as very high, an index between 3.0 and 3.49 as high, an index between 2.5 and 2.99 as moderate, an index between 2.0 and 2.49 as low, and an index less than 1.99 as very low. As shown in the chart, all sites had diversity indices that fell between 0.83 and 2.03, with a mean of 1.75. Based on the scale, San Sebastian and Talalora were categorized as having low species diversity, while the rest of the sites were categorized as having very low diversity. Overall, the species diversity of Makeda Bay was very low. This finding is congruent with the study of Abino et al. in 2014 where they reported a low species diversity index of a different mangrove stand in the same province. In this case, the very low diversity can be attributed to the lack of variation of mangrove species observed. The following are the conclusions based on the results of the study. For species composition, mangrove forests in Makeda Bay contain 19 mangrove species belonging to 11 families and 12 genera. Out of these 19 species, 4 were recognized by IUCN as threatened. This include the endangered Camptostemon filipinense, the vulnerable Avicinia rumfiana, and the near-threatened Aegisiras floridum and Cirrips decandra. The most abundant species was Avicinia rumfiana, with 340 individuals, while the least abundant species were Acanthus ibracteatus and Acanthus volubilis, with only one representative each. For biomass and carbon content, Makeda Bay contains a total biomass estimate of 708.57 tons per hectare. 79.89% of the total biomass is attributed to the above-ground biomass. Furthermore, the total carbon sequestered in the biomass was 436.4 tons per hectare with a sequestration potential of 1,601.55 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Out of the nine study sites, Katbalogan had the largest biomass, carbon content, and carbon dioxide sequestration potential, while Daram had the smallest values in all three parameters. The biomass and carbon storage estimates can be attributed to the three height, three diameter, and species diversity. For mangrove community structure, the top three species with the largest basal area were Excoecaria agalioca, Avicinia alba, and Avicinia rumfiana. In terms of relative frequency, Avicinia marina, Rhizophora apiculata, and Sonerasha alba scored the highest with a relative frequency of 11.84%. Meanwhile, the species that ranked highest in relative dominance was Excoecaria agalioca, followed by Avicinia alba and Avicinia rumfiana. Furthermore, Avicinia marina scored the highest importance value. This implies that Avicinia marina ranked first as the most abundant mangrove species in the whole Makeda Bay. Next in rank is Sonerasha alba followed by Rhizophora apiculata. The success of the three species is attributed to various factors such as seed viability, elevated carbon dioxide levels, tidal flooding, type of substrate, and salinity of the sites. Moreover, the whole Makeda Bay scored a Shannon Weiner Diversity Index of 1.57 which implies that there is a lack of species variation observed in each site. However, despite the low diversity, mangrove forests in Makeda Bay can store and sequester substantial amounts of carbon. 
The following are the recommendations based on the findings of this study. First, conservation efforts should be exerted on the species that were classified as endangered, vulnerable, and near-threatened. Second, mangrove trees in Makeda Bay must be developed and protected to allow them to grow and reach their maximal height and diameter in order to maximize their biomass and hence their capacity to sequester carbon. Third, diversity of mangrove forests in Makeda Bay should be increased through community-based ecological rehabilitation of mangroves. Fourth, further study on the biomass of the mangroves in Makeda Bay can be done to come up with more accurate estimates that will be helpful in analyzing the impacts of climate change. Fifth, long-term monitoring is recommended to document changes in mangrove carbon storage and sequestration potential. For the effective management of mangrove forests in Makeda Bay, the following proposals should be considered in crafting and implementing the appropriate and practicable management plan for the area. First, Community-Based Forest Management Agreement. CBFMA is an agreement between the Department of Environment and Natural Resources and the local community to protect, rehabilitate, and sustainably manage mangrove forests. The community is awarded tenural rights by DENR, thus becoming a steward of the mangrove forest. Second, Integrated Approach to Coastal Zone Management. ICZM aims to create an institutional framework that addresses coastal zone issues and promote transboundary collaboration. Third, Rehabilitation of Mangrove Forests Mangrove rehabilitation programs must be an evidence-based approach supported by ecological research to ensure mangrove success and maximal growth under optimal conditions. Factors such as the type of substrate, tidal level, and inundation must be considered in selecting appropriate sites for each mangrove species as each species has its set of preferences. Fourth, regular monitoring of mangrove forests. Monitoring efforts should be conducted to assess the vulnerability of mangroves to climate change and land use change and determine their effects on mangrove carbon storage and sequestration potential. Fifth, Livelihood programs for the local community. Alternative livelihood training centered in sustainable aquaculture and agriculture programs should be considered to steer the community away from mangrove resources. It would involve community support and job training to assist and aid the community in shifting to alternative livelihoods. Sixth, information education campaign. An information education campaign should be conducted to actively involve the local community and the stakeholders in managing mangrove forests and raise awareness about the importance of conserving and protecting the mangrove ecosystem. Seventh, effective enforcement of existing laws and policies. The Philippines has various laws, decrees, proclamations, and administrative orders that govern mangrove development, management, and rehabilitation. However, the lack of resources and manpower must be addressed for the effective enforcement of such laws and policies. Information dissemination to the local communities and government workers responsible for enforcing laws and policies is of utmost importance. Furthermore, the coordination and support of the local government units, non-governmental organizations, and the national government agencies, particularly the Department of Environment and Natural Resources and Department of Agriculture, is essential.